Welcome to Independent VFX. In this tutorial, we will look at how to create a stream of ejecting bullet shells using a particle plugin that you find right inside Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. In order to complete this tutorial, you will obviously need footage of someone firing a gun that you have already added smoke and muzzle flash to. You will either need stock footage of a bullet shell or you can create your own using the technique that we outlined in part 2 of our muzzle flash tutorial where you use CC cylinder right inside Adobe After Effects. Here is our background clip of our actor pretending to fire a gun and as mentioned we've added smoke and flash to this using the techniques that are outlined in part 1 of our muzzle flash tutorial. So this will serve as our background layer and we will be putting our ejecting shells on top of this. Then we've got our cylinder, CC cylinder shell here. Again you could um, substitute this with your stock footage which you have keyed and prepped. But basically you want your bullet shell to look something like this. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to create a particle comp. So go composition new composition and you can just you, you want this composition to be fairly small because you don't want to um, put too much strain on the processor when you are computing your particle effect so we'll work with a comp of say 110 by 110 pixels um, duration wise let's just say 10 seconds for luck and let's say OK then what you want to do is you want to grab your cylinder shell or your stock shell that you've keyed and you want to drop it into this comp and obviously it's massive so you want to scale this down until it fits nice and neatly inside your little 110 square pixel comp something like that maybe even a bit smaller right and let's I'm just gonna zoom in so we can see what we're doing and let's RAM preview that. Right, so there we have our spinning shell keyed on a transparent background inside our small little 100 pixel comp. So this composition is going to act as our custom layer map when we get into using our particle plugin. Right, so let's create our composition now for our particle effect. So we will go composition, new composition, and we want this to be a full size composition if you're working to HD or HDV. Set it accordingly and I'm going to just make the background color a kind of mid-gray so I can really see what I'm doing. Say OK. Right and let's just toggle the background to the color we selected. Right so there's our comp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by dropping in comp 1 which I should have named so let's do that now. Let's just call this spinning shell particle texture or something like that. Go back to comp 2 which I've just created and I will call this composition ejecting shells. Right so first step is to take your spinning shell texture drop it into this new comp and at this stage what you might even want to do is take your ejecting shell comp and drop it on top of your footage of your guy with the gun. What this will do is it's going to give you a sense of scale in terms of whether or not your shells are the right size for your gun. So if I look at that, I think, yeah, I could believe that. That's roughly the right size. So back to our ejecting shells comp. Right, so onto our particle effects. I'm going to just create a new black solid. Right, so there's our black solid. And to this, I'm going to apply effect simulation particle playground a particle playground is a particle effect that comes standard inside Adobe After Effects if you own trap code particular I actually recommend that as a better solution to particle playground but I did say we would do these tutorials with plugins that you find right inside After Effects so let's get started we've applied our particle playground effect and you can see by default it's pushing out these red particles so the first step we want to do, let's switch off the visibility on our spinning shell texture which is at the bottom. Click back on our particle layer and let's go here to where it says layer map. And let's tell it to use layer spinning shell particle texture. And now if I scrub through you can see it's spitting out hundreds of copies of our bullet shell. So we're going to just change this to 
relative random, the time offset. What that'll do is it'll pick different moments in our animation so all the shells are not perfectly aligned. And what you'll need to do here actually is put in um, a random offset amount. So I'll just say 1.5. There you go. So you can see now it's taking shells from different moments in time. Okay, so the next step is to set the birth rate or the rate at which these particles are emitted. You can see here at the moment it's saying particles per second 60. Now you can be really scientific about this and go and research the rate of fire of the gun that you're animating, um, but you don't really need to do that. You can kind of just pick a value that feels right. So I'm going to say 10 particles per second. Is probably a value that would work fairly well for most guns or automatic guns. Then what you need to do is turn this velocity right up. But before I do that, I'm just going to take direction random to zero and I'm going to take velocity random to zero. Right, and I'm going to turn this velocity up. Again, you can experiment with values here, but I've found that for me and this particular setup, the value of 3300 works quite nicely. And let's RAM preview that. So you can see these shells are being generated now at a rate of 10 every second. And at the moment they're shooting straight up with a force or a velocity of 3300. So let's start. I'm going to start by moving the position where they get generated off to the right here. So that they've got room to kind of perform and behave in the way I want them to. So I'm going to start by setting this position to somewhere here. And then the next step is I need to change the direction that they leave the emission point from. So I'm going to change my direction if I had to change that to minus 90. Now you can see the shells are coming out in a horizontal stream. So I don't want them to be that horizontal. I want a trajectory that kind of comes out probably around 45 degrees. So that's probably a little bit too extreme. So let's try minus 40. Okay and now you'll notice the shells are just being ejected and they kind of infinitely flying off out of the screen. So we need to add gravity. So let's open up our gravity controller here. And right now the gravity force is 120. What I've found is you want your gravity to be at least double your velocity of your shells. So if we had to double that value, let's just say roughly 7,000. So now you can see the shells are arcing in a more believable manner. And if I do a RAM preview of that, let's see what we're getting. There we go. So you can see you've got a nice stream of ejecting brass shells. Obviously though, this feels far too uniform. So now we want to work some variation into this. What I will do here, instead of using these default velocity random spread and direction random spread, I'm going to rather use my own expression to control this. So I'm going to, here in the layers, I'm going to open up my particle effect. And under Canon, I'm going to access velocity random spread and I'm going to alt click the stopwatch create my own wiggle expression. Now this is a very basic expression. Look, you're very welcome to, to do this using the controls in the particle effects tab. Um, I just personally like to do this with an expression. So I'm going to go wiggle 25. So I want every frame to have a different value because I'm working at 25 frames per second. And let's say an amount of say, I don't know, 25. Let's see what that gives us. Now if I scrub forward, okay, I think we need to just take the random value up a bit more. Okay, there we go. That seems to be working a bit of randomness into the arc of our shells. And the next randomness I want to add is to the velocity channel. So I will alt-click the velocity random spread. And again, I'll say wiggle 25 times a second because I want every frame to be different. And I will try a value of, I don't know, about 300. Right, so there we can see our shells are now being ejected with some kind of randomness to them, which is great. What I want to do now is start positioning this in my master comp. So I'm going to just scrub forward to where our, I'm going to just switch the ejecting shells off quickly. Scrub forward to where the shooting starts, which is about here. So if you remember, we moved our emission point off to the side here, so I'm going to need to just drag this layer 
probably somewhere there. That looks like they're coming probably from around the right point. Now looking at these shells, they feel very gold and very yellow. So I am going to add a photo filter just to color correct them ever so slightly. So I'm going to search here, effect photo. There it is, photo filter. Just drag that and drop it onto the shells. And I'm going to use this cool preset here, cool filter 82. And I'll just turn that up to around 35. There we go. Now shells already feel a whole lot more integrated. Now the next step to make these shells look believable and real is to introduce some motion blur. So let's jump back to our ejecting shells comp. You just close up all of these layers and settings here. Toggle my switches and now for our particle layer I'm going to enable motion blur there and enable motion blur for the comp. And there you go, you can see immediately we've got motion blur. Let's go back to our shooter comp. There we go. And if I ramp preview this. So now looking at this I can see I just need to move my layer a little bit up so that these shells are coming out of the breach. At the moment they look like they're starting a bit low. And the only other thing I really want to do is these shells feel very visible. So I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer down to say half, 50%. That feels a lot better, maybe even lower, 40%. And let's RAM preview this. Right, and looking at that now, I feel the angle of exit is still a little bit high. So I'm going to jump back to my ejecting shell comp and I'm just going to say this direction angle, let's try minus 30. Sorry, other way, minus 50. There we go. Ram preview again. And there you can see the results of that. So there we go. Rather easy to create a nice stream of ejecting bullet shells right inside Adobe After Effects without any fancy plugins. Particle Playground comes with After Effects and as you can see, can deliver really decent looking results um, using the CC cylinder technique to create your bullet shells. So all of this done right inside Adobe After Effects. Um, and you can obviously customize and play with these settings, the amount of shells, um, the way they spin, how far they're ejected, all of these factors to craft and create the different effects for the different kinds of firearms you are working with in your scene. So thanks for watching Independent VFX. Please subscribe and stay tuned for the next tutorial. I'm Scott Newman. Thanks for watching. Cheers.